Yo, what's cracking mates? Today's topic is going to be pretty technical once again, so buckle up and put your helmets on. I'm not only going to show you how I reversed the AFK mechanic in the 335A WoW client, but also how I was able to deactivate it. If you're asking yourself why I do all this effort, well, I sadly am a purist, and my OCD doesn't let me sleep at night when stuff I create isn't perfect. In my last very long exploration video about Mount Hyjal, the recording had a very brief flicker while the camera was zooming around. This issue is caused by the character going AFK since I don't press any keys myself. The camera is in reality controlled by Niavau Utils by manipulating memory directly. You can see it happening in about a second. Lovely. Anyway, for those impatient, here is a quick rundown of what you're going to see. The first segment is a reenactment of me showing off my initial assumptions, which turned out to be wrong, and then the correct one and some assembly naughty talk. Here in the video it only takes a few minutes, but believe me, when I was working on it, it took me around a day to wrap my head around it. I haven't cut or sped up any parts of the reversing process since I think it gives you a fuller picture. You also should watch this on a proper monitor, it's going to be quite painful on a smartphone. The second segment is simply showing off how I altered wow.exe with a hex editor in order to change it persistently and load the new behavior on each subsequent launch. If you're lazy or don't really care about all the black magic happening in the background, there is a link in the video description to an IPS patch file on my GitHub. And as a side note, I will most likely move away from github.com to a self-hosted repository in the not too distant future. As you can see, my tool of choice is Cheat Engine. It's finally time to hunt down the memory which is responsible for the AFK logic, and since there is no source files, all I can do is making assumptions. In the beginning we do a scan for an unknown initial value and let it scan for 4 bytes. These are pretty common variables and widely used in general. It's quite a few results. Now we have to narrow it down by making our first assumption. I assume that there is a counter ticking up, letting the game execute code once it reaches a certain value. To filter out unwanted memory addresses, I've changed the scan type to increased value and click every now and then to perform the next scan. Given our guess is correct, a value should be constantly growing in size. What I've done now is moving my character in-game to reset any potential counter and change the scan type to decreased value since it must have reset in that case. After that, I continue scanning for increased values. Here I'm resetting the counter once more and performing the same scans as before. First one decreased, then continuing increased. And another time. Wow, only three results left. I must be really close. Lucky me. Wah, wah. Turns out my assumption must have been wrong. Too bad. Let's start a fresh scan for unknown initial value and go to assumption number two. Maybe it's a counter, but it's actually ticking down instead. I'm resetting the counter here as well, but execute the opposite scans. 
one increased and then further decreased runs. Seems it wasn't quite enough. One more reset to get things going. Okay, can't be a decreasing counter either. Assumption number three. It's actually not a counter, but a timestamp of the last action being performed. After scanning for an increased timestamp two times, a change the scan type to unchanged value. If it really is a timestamp, it shouldn't change at all if I don't tap or focus the game. In order to keep my fingers from going numb, I enable the repeat option which performs the unchanged scan as fast as it can. Let's see if we can narrow it down even more with a new timestamp. Since the results won't get less from here onward, I can finally start using the next trick in the toolbox. I search for the first entry that looks like a timestamp and strikes my fancy, right click it and choose to let it show me which instructions access the selected memory address. Wow, that thing here is reading this memory quite often. Looks like it could be even each frame. Seems kinda wasteful if it's really for the AFK check. But hey, what do I know? I have no clue about programming. I choose to show the disassembled code and have a look. The 
the high functioning people in my audience might already have spotted something quite nice in the next line. For all other people who don't use hex numbers casually in their everyday life, I'll convert it to decimal. 300,000. If we assume those are milliseconds, we can divide by a thousand and then by 60. 5. This could be the value for checking the 5 minute mark to trigger AFK. To rule out any potential mistakes, I scroll up and down a few lines in order to spot any hints which would confirm that this is in fact the correct spot. Jackpot. A string idle message is pushed onto the stack here. That simply must be it. Looking a little bit closer at the assembly instructions in question, I translate it as follows. Subtract a millisecond timestamp of the last action being performed from a value, most likely the current timestamp. Then subtract 300,000 milliseconds from that delta, perform a check if the resulting value is negative, which only is the case as long as the delta is less than 300,000 milliseconds, and if the result is in fact negative, jump to a previous address. To find out where I land after the jump, set a breakpoint and then step over. It's a few dozen lines above the instructions we came from. Now comes the fun part. I right click on the conditional jump and choose assemble to replace the current instruction. Here I simply rewrite the jump if lower with an unconditional jump. Cheat Engine also notices that I try to replace a 6 byte instruction with a 5 byte one and suggests to add a no op as padding afterwards. Time to test the affix and show it in action. Or unaction, however you wanna call it. I will speed up the footage here, just take note of the inking clock. Just as a side note, disabling AFK this way only works on the client side. If a server itself also has implemented AFK checks additionally, then it won't have any effect at all. As you can see, neither the 5 nor the 60 minute mark have resulted in any action at all. We did it! Last but not least, let's rewrite the application file itself. For this task, I use AJAXD, but any hex editor will do. Search for the old assembly instructions. There should be a single match only. To be sure, we can also compare a few bytes before and after if they match with what we have seen in Cheat Engine. Replace the instruction bytes with the new ones, save, and call it a day. Congrats! My next goal for reversing is to disable WMO portal calling in order to make my out of bounds videos a little bit more coherent. Let's see if I can pull that one off too. Anyway, I hope you have learned a thing or two, or were at least entertained by my techno babble. See ya!